Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problems that you will find on page number 877. On page 877 you will find three problems there, two of which we already did yesterday. We'll pick up now from the very last problem that you see on that page, number 28. As you can see, it is already on the blackboard. If at the end of the video you find this helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me, and if you wish to get hold of me, you can do so by sending me an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com Alright, let's get going. Let's get going with this thing. Number 28, it says we have two points on a number line that are both three units from negative four. So let's draw a number line first. That seems logical. Here's our number line. Let's put a zero somewhere here. And negative four if we're looking for. One, two, three, four. Right here is our negative four. And negative 4 here will serve as our point of reference. This guy right here is our point of reference. In other words, negative 4, in other words, negative 4 here will serve as our 0. It has to serve as our 0 when we substitute the value of x. When we when we substitute the value of x in any of this expression, it has to give us 0. Let's start with this one. x minus 3, if we set this equal to 0, that has to serve, to say, as we said, said, is our point of reference, is our 0. Does that, give us, does that give us x equal to negative 4? No, that is going to give us x equal to positive 3. What about this guy? When we solve for x here, x will be, x will be negative 3. x is our negative 4. What about that guy? x minus 4. When you solve for x here, x will be positive 4. That won't do the job. It is this guy right here. x plus 4 has to equal to 0. x plus 4, this expression right here, this expression, x plus 4, this expression has to serve as our point of reference, because point of reference means 0. And that will be, if you set it equal to 0, that will give us where we are starting out, we are starting out at negative 4, which means B, C, and D are wrong. Answer is A. And that is all that is required here. We don't have to do anything else at all in the exam. Now, just to convince you, just to convince you that this, this indeed is the right answer, and it, this, this indeed yields what the two points we are looking for, we can actually solve it. Something that will not do a real exam because it will be a waste of time in the real exam. But here we'll solve it to find out the two points that we're looking for. First we'll find these two points algebraically and then I'm going to show you the two points that we're looking for manually. Okay, let's do that, shall we? Absolute value of x plus 4 is positive 3, which means, which means that either, either x plus 4 is negative 3 of course, in that case, when we take the absolute value of both sides, x plus 4 becomes positive 3, because we, that's what absolute value means. Absolute value measures distance. Absolute value values measure distance. That's what absolute value means. Absolute value means it doesn't matter which direction you're going. You're going in the left to the left or to the right makes no difference. Just go, just go three miles. Which way do I go? Do I go left, left or right? Doesn't matter. Just go three miles away from me, and that's absolute value on the number line. You can go either direction. So, one more time. Absolute value of x plus four is three, which means that either x plus four is equal to negative three, or x plus four is positive three. It could be either. If we solve for x here, x equals to negative 7. Let's see if that works. This is our point of reference, negative 4, and we're looking for two points on a number line that are three units from negative 4. So if you go to the left here, three units, 
1, 2, 3, where do you suppose we'll end up? 1, 2, 3, we'll end up in negative 7, which is what the algebra tells us. Similarly, if you go to go 3 units this way, 1, 2, 3, we should end up here, which is negative 1. Let's see what the algebra tells us. Bring the 4 to the other side, we'll end up with 3 minus 4, negative 1. There you go. The answer is A. The answer is A. But all of this was unnecessary. We simply have to understand what the point of reference are is. And whatever that point of reference is, that point of reference is your zero. That you set it equal to zero and that's what you're looking for. And then you put the absolute sign around it because it doesn't matter which way we go. That's what that's our starting point, that's our zero. Number 28, on the next page. In number 28, we have a toy car, and we are told that this toy car travels S inches in T seconds. And the distance that it travels, which is the S inches, is given by is given by, is governed by this mathematical relationship between the time and the distance. It is governed by, it is governed by this relationship. That's the function. The question is, what's the average speed? What is the average speed? I don't know why I'm writing way over there. I should have written it here. What is the average speed? Well, how do we find average speed? We know already, when we, whenever we want to find the average speed, we take the distance that we travel the distance that we travel, I should write down distance travel, I'm not going to do it, I'm lazy over the amount of time, over the amount of time that it takes for example if I tell you that I travel a distance of 90 miles in 3 hours well what was my average speed? 90 miles in 3 hours is 90 divided by 3 30 miles an hour distance divided by time distance is given by this expression right here this, this quantity right here 16 16 t times square root of t and time is given by letter t which measures, which, which measures the time that the car, the toy car travels in seconds that's what we've done this is our average speed T drops out and it's simply 16 times root T. 16 times root T is answer choice B. Let's look at next one, number 30. That was number 29. Number 30. Now keep in mind that there are 30 multiple choice questions here, which means the first 10 are easy approximately. The middle 10 are medium and last 10 are hard. Number 30 on a difficulty scale, on a scale, on a scale of 1 through 30, is 30. Which means it's going to require a little bit more work. Do you understand? And as soon as we go from 30 to 31st, you'll find that the 31 is actually very easy because it's a new scale. 31 through 38 is a new scale. It's a scale of 1 through 8. 31 through 38. On a scale of 1 to, one to 8, 31 is number 1. But 30 is going to be a little bit more involved, as I said. It says, uh, well, let's first, it says that we have a scatter plot here on the next page. It says the scatter plot shown below of some energy that they're producing in a nuclear power plant. And the question simply is, which of these four equations that they give us does a good job of portraying, governing what, what is portrayed in the graph? Let's put the graph on the, on the blackboard first. I'm going to do the best that I can. If it's not perfect, that's alright. So it begins with 700. And I have no choice but to put the whole, whole bloody thing on the blackboard. It's going to take a, a minute or so. Because otherwise you'll have difficulty following what's going on here. Because obviously I cannot put the book in front of the camera. So here we go. So 20, 40, 60, 80, and 800. So 
So this is 20, 40, 60, 80 and so forth. And I'll do the best I can, okay? So here's 20, 40, 60, 80, 800. We have first point, so here are 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. And as I'm putting these points on the blackboard, you make sure that you follow follow me with the with the chart that you see in front of you. So the first one seems like it is a 60 around 1. Then we have another one around between 8, 80 and around 90, which is a 2 around. Then we have something at a, at a 3. We have something right here. Then we have a little bit above it. Then we have at 6. Way up here at 8, 800. A little bit above 800 as a matter of fact. Then we have something below it. Then at 9, at 9 they show something around 790. And then finally we have something at 60. And I think I missed one. If I miss one, it doesn't matter. If I miss one, it's not a big deal, okay? So this is what it looks like. The question is... Yes, I think I missed something here. I believe so. As I said, if it's not perfect... If it's not perfect, it's not a big deal. If it's not perfect, it's not a big deal. This is a scatter plot. The question is, which which four of the answer choices that you see there will serve as the appropriate equation for this scatter plot? The well, very first thing we have to understand, and this is always a good idea to start whenever we're dealing with, whenever somebody asks us to recognize the proper equation for a given given sketch, it's always the easiest thing to do. Is all, all, always a good idea to look at the intercept, x-intercept and y-intercept. Here we have no x-intercept, we're going to look at the y-intercept, and as we, as we extend it, you will see that when x is equal to 0, it cuts the y-axis at some positive point. It is not negative 700 something. So if you look at the answer choices and you put in x equal to 0, if you put in x equal to 0 in all of them, you will see that the a and b are not the answers. They give us negative y-intercept. The contest is between C and D. The contest is only between C and D. Let's look at C. Let's look at answer choice C. Answer choice C says y is equal to negative 2 third x squared plus 20x plus 745. Now I understand, I realize, I'm fully cognizant of the fact that that is not what the book says. It says negative 1.67, or negative 1.67 is two-third. And negative one, or one and two-third. And similarly, this is 19 point something. Don't make a fuss about it, just put down 20. Just keep your life simpler. Second thing I'm gonna do is here, instead of putting down negative one and two-third, let's put this as a, as, as a mix, as a, as a compound fraction, as negative five-third. It will make our calculation simpler. Let's try, let's try a couple of points and see what happens. Let's try with something about right here at 3. At 3 it seems like it is 780. We have first point here at 3 and 780. In other words, when x is equal to 3, y is supposed to be 780. See if this thing gives us that. I don't know why it is. That is not answer choice C. The answer choice C is actually positive. Let's start with Chevy. Let's begin. So this 800 doesn't it doesn't have, doesn't have anything to do with, with this equation. Let's begin, shall we? So we'll put in x equal to 3, we should get 780. Let's put 3 here, which is why I'm using the, this one, because 3 was going to cancel out with that one. So here we go. So y is equal to 5 third x squared, x is 3, so it's going to be 9, plus 20 times 3, plus 745. So what's going to happen here is that we have 745 here, we have a 60 here, 5, 0. As you can see, we are already up to 805. If we were to add something more to it, 
of course it will go even higher. We need to be at 780. This is already way too much. Which tells us that we need to subtract something from it. This needs to be negative. This guy needs to be negative. And now this is going to be negative 15. Subtract negative 15 from it. And we'll end up with 790, which is very close to what we have here. And if you like, we can do one more. Let's do one more. Let's do this time. Let's see if I can find out here. We did three. Let's try six. Six is over here. Right here is six. Let's try six and six and looks like about 810. Six and 810. So when we put in six for x, we should get 810 with the negative in front of it because we'll be taking something away after we add this quantity to that quantity because this quantity is already positive, this quantity is going to be positive. So you're going to add them up, you're going to be too much, you're going to have to take something away. Let's do that. X is equal to 6. So y is equal to negative 5 third times, if x is equal to 6, 6 squared is going to be 36. Plus 20 times 6 plus 745. 745 and 20 times 6 is 120. You see, only 865, we want to be at 810. This is too much. We have to, we have to subtract something. Something that we need to subtract is from here. 5 times 12 is 60. 805, what do you know? 805, 810, it checks out. If you like, I can show you one more. Let's try 9. Right here is 9. Let's try this point right here, which I believe is around 790. After we finish with all of this thing, I'm going to show you actually how to do this problem in the real exam. This is not how obviously we're going to do it in a real exam, because this is turning into a saga. And we don't have three hours to write a novel. We have to get it done quickly. After we finish this whole thing, and after we understand what's going on, there is a quicker way, a much quicker way to tackle this thing. Let's, let's try nine and that thing, see what happens. We should get something around 790. So. One more time, we're going to have negative 5 third times 9 squared, which is 81, plus 20 times 9, plus 745. 745 plus 20 times 9 is 180. We're already up to 900 and something. We need to be at 790. We need to take something away. Let's divide by 3, and we end up with 27 here. 27 times 10 is 270. 27 times 10 is 270, therefore 27 times 5 has to be half of 270. Half of 200 is 100, and half of 70 is 35, so we have to take away 135. And what do you suppose we're going to get when we take away 135 from 925? We'll get 890. Voila. It should be 790. We we'll have to borrow one to, to take care of this thing. It's 790. Of course, it's 790 because 890 is almost close to 900. 790, which is exactly what we have. So the question is, question is, how do we recognize this equation? How do we recognize this equation like that in the exam? Well, there are only two things that we have to understand. There are only two things we have to understand. First thing we need to understand is that the y-intercept is positive, we, which we already did. That, that, take, uh, that takes out two of the answer choices. Of the remaining answer choices, what we need to understand here, and I'm going to do here, I'm going to erase all of this extra part so that it's not crowded. I'm going to erase all of this extra part so that you can actually see it. And see if you can understand, see if you would agree. If you were to take a, this is a scatter plot, if you were to draw something around it, and when you're doing it, you try to, you're trying to minimize the distance from each of the points. Do you understand? If this is called the best fit. So this is something like this is what's going to look like if I'm doing a decent job of it. There we go. It should look something like this. What do you find? We find that what we're dealing with here, what we have here is what we have here 
is on upside down parabola upside down parabola first thing first first of all it's a parabola hence the quadratic equation hence the equation of the second power and it's upside down it's an upside down parabola of course of course the coefficient of x squared needs to be needs to be negative we had already eliminated we had already eliminated answer choice a and b the contest was between c and d and d uh, c will not do the job c will not do the job because in c the coefficient of x squared is positive if the coefficient is positive that parabola will turn upward this is upside down upside down parabola requires a negative coefficient and that's all that is needed here and we can recognize the answer is a or rather c the answer not rather c not c rather uh, the answer is d this is wrong the answer is d let's do the next one shall we number 30 that took a long time but it's number 30 for a reason let's do the next one Number 31 tells us that n people decide to go on a trip. And decide they divide the cost of $800 equally. among themselves. What happens later on is that two people drop out. Two people drop out and as a result cost per person goes up by $20. As a result, the cost per person goes up by $20. The question is, how many people originally were planning to go on the trip? Let's, let's find out, shall we? We don't need any of, any of this anymore. While we are at it, I hope that you are working on your vocabulary. There are lessons. There are 100 lessons on, on my channel. Just type in search for SAT vocabulary words day one. The first video will pop right up. Work on those. There are 100 videos as I said. Improve your vocabulary because that is very important if you have any hope, of, any hope at all of getting a decent score in the reading part. So there are two ways you can go about it. One way, which is the way we're going to do here because this is on a scale of one through, on a scale of one through eight, on a scale of one through eight, this is the very first one. It's supposed to be an easy question. We're not going to make a drama out of it. And people decide to go on a trip. They decide to divide amount equally among themselves. Two of them later on drop out. And when they drop out, everybody else has to pay $20 more. What do you suppose the original number of people was? Of course it was 10. Because $800, $800 the cost of the trip, which we are told is $800. So if you divide equally among 10 people, each person will end up paying $80. But two of them dropped out. Two of them dropped out and now we only have eight people. If there are only eight people left and the cost, total cost is 800, each one of them has to fork out 20 more dollars. Instead of $80, each person has to pay $100. That's all there is. The question is how many people originally wanted to go on the trip? The answer is 10. The answer here is 10. So that's the quick way. Algebraic way would be to simply, algebraic way would be to set it up, believe it or not, as an algebraic equation, which is there are $800 that needs to be raised 
by n people and later on two people drop out and as a result the amount of money that each person pays which is 800 divided by n minus 2 you see 800 divided by 10 minus 2 this amount is 20 more than that amount which means if you were to write it as the equation this amount that we have here this amount is 20 more than that amount and because it is an equal sign we need to subtract 20 there we go we need to solve this equation algebraically to get the answer <coughs> which we are not going to do right now it's, it's not necessary the answer is 10 number 32 number 32 is also equally easy because on a scale of 1 to 8 is number 2 2 times 5x minus 20 we are told minus 15 plus 8x is to equal as you can see it's a very simple very straightforward very innocuous linear equation work on your vocabulary okay understand that it is important simply working on math is not enough you have to prepare for the entire exam I'm looking in my cards here to see if I can very quickly tell you when we learned this word innocuous if I can find it very quickly if not we'll move on because I believe we did cover it oh there we go oh what do you know on day 90 so very straightforward very simple quite innocuous linear equation let's work on it that's 10x minus 40 minus 15 minus 8x has to equal 7 10x minus 8x is 2x we have a 7 here bring the 40 to that side bring 15 to that side there we go 15 plus 40 is 55 55 plus 5 would be 60 so it's 62 2x equals to 62 and therefore x equals to 31 and think to it as you can see this is a lot less work than what we put in on number 30 because number 30 was 30 on a scale of 1 through 30 number 32 is 2 on a scale of 1 through 8 we'll meet again tomorrow we'll pick up from where we left off in the meantime if you wish to get hold of me you can do so by sending me as I said before an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com alright bye now <laughs>